Good evening, Saints. Welcome to Grace Baptist Church. Midweek service. Please turn to the book of Romans, first chapter. Before I forget it, um, if you're watching on YouTube or Rumble, Rumble or YouTube, please subscribe to the channel. We don't ask for money, but it will, will notify you when we have a uh, new service and we usually put two out a week and um, helps our algorithm. We uh, have a, a pretty good reach. I don't know how much it is because I only get what we get in YouTube and it's uh, pretty good and uh, so we would like for you to take advantage of these teachings and preachings with Brock and myself and uh, we hope that they edify you and that you're learning something and that you will pass what you you learn on to your brothers and sisters in Christ so without further ado look at verse 16 in the first chapter I know we finished this up but it ties into what we're going to be looking at tonight so Verse 16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in it is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, The just by faith shall live. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath shown it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Abba Father, we just thank you for your word. We thank you you have revealed yourself not only in nature but to the saints by revelation. We pray that we would take the gospel with us wherever we go, that you would reveal to more and more people your gospel and that they would be saved and they would come to you in faith and repentance. May we hear the soft sound of sandals feet. May we see Jesus and Him only. We pray these things in His name and in the power of the Spirit. Amen. Tonight we're looking at the wrath of God. I read the first two verses before that because why? is this passage so crucial about the wrath of God. It's because of what God did in the Gospel in verses 16 and 17 that we looked at in the last two weeks. And he ended that verse with the just by faith shall live. And because of that he was not ashamed of the Gospel. We have a lot of people that get mixed up and confused in terminology and we have people that say well faith or works or faith versus works but that's not what the Bible teaches it teaches justification through faith alone the faith without works will get you nowhere the opposite of works is not faith the opposite of wor works is the righteousness of Christ. The righteousness of Christ. And that is who our faith is in, is Christ. And faith is never opposite law. Because in Romans 3.31 it says faith fulfills the law. And in 1 Corinthians 1.30 look at that real quickly.
But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. It's in Christ. And if we have Christ, we can escape the wrath to come. Without Christ, you are helpless to escape the wrath to come. In the 11th chapter of Hebrews, we we'll go ahead and turn there because we're going to look at a couple of verses there while we're there. It talks about faith. This is called the faith chapter or the hall of faith of the old covenant. But one of the better definitions of faith is found in this chapter. Now faith, verse 1, is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders received witness. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were made of things which were not made of things which do appear. And then he goes on and starts talking about Abel and Moses and Abraham and Noah and uh, many people in the Old Testament who by faith believed God. And there were some names in there people maybe we didn't suspect. But see, there's none of us righteous. No, not one. We see the first thing about faith is it's not just belief. It includes belief, but it's not only belief. It's not just an intellectual exercise. We see uh, in Hebrews 11:6, but without faith it is impossible to please Him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So, it does involve belief. But it's more than that because we see in verse 13 we must be persuaded by this belief. It says, These all died in faith not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off and persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. So they were persuaded. It was an emotion. It involved the heart. So we see faith involves the mind, the intellect, the heart, and that's from persuaded and we embrace them or we exercise will. You can believe all the things in the Bible and be lost. You can be very emotional about Christ and be lost. You can believe all of the things in the Bible and be emotional about them and still be lost if you have not embraced them with your will. So your intellect, your mind, your emotions, and your will all contribute to faith. To intellectually believe is not enough. But are you persuaded of the truth? We see in 2 Thessalonians 2.10 I didn't mark any of these, so it um, might take a little bit to get to them. Okay, 210. And with all deceitfulness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. Do you love the truth? It's not enough just to know the truth intellectually. Do you love the truth? Because he says, For this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie, that they all might be judged who believe not the truth but had pleasure 
in unrighteousness. You see this warning here? How many people are in our churches that say, we believe, we believe, and live like the world? How many of us have ever been guilty of that? That's one thing to ever be guilty. It's another thing to make a practice of it. And as we look at this hall of faith, we find out these people, they believed it intellectually. They, with their minds, were persuaded and they were emotional about it. And they embraced it. They came to it, came to Christ, and believed Him. And they came out of the world. They were in the world, but they were not of the world. There's a world of difference there. And we see in in these saints, these old covenant saints, that are talking about the gospel that God has provided, a righteousness, our only hope, because without righteousness and holiness, we cannot see God. And so the gospel is faith in the unique Son, Christ, who left His glory. We call that the incarnation. I know some of you say, well, I hear, I hear that a lot. Yes. He came in the likeness of sinful flesh, but He was not a sinner because He was not a child of Adam. He lived a life that was above reproach. By re above reproach, I mean always. John 8.29 says, I always do what the Father has willed me to do. Always. Never for a nanosecond did He disobey God. And then John 8.46, He turned around to the Pharisees, which one of you convicts me of sin? They could not. So He had a positive righteousness and He had no sin in His life. And because of that, He died as a sacrifice for His people. On the third day, He rose again, having been acceptable in His sacrificial death. And He ascended into the heavens at the right hand of God the Father in power as a King. So we must understand. We must be persuaded we must embrace this. Why? Because of the wrath to come. God said the wrath of God through the pen of Paul is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of humans who hold the truth in unrighteousness. As I said, a lot of people believe that this is the Bible. They believe God wrote it. And yet, they have no love for it. Some of them have hatred for it, and some are just non-committal. God said, I would rather be hot or cold about it and not be lukewarm. The non-committal are lukewarm. They think, one day, before they die, they're going to come to Christ. They may, but they don't know when they're going to die. How many people plan to come to Christ at 10 o'clock and died at 9.59? We don't know. Maybe a majority. If you understand the depravity of what Paul is talking about there, the wrath revealed against all ungodliness, and that comes first. And unrighteousness. Because we're ungodly, we do unrighteous things. We're in rebellion against the Holy God. And when people fail to believe the plight of humanity, of its sinfulness, its rebellion, its corruptness before God, and they think, well, I'm pretty good. I'm better than Joe down the street. Or we're, we're Americans and we're better than the Asian Chinese communist or the Russian Europeans or the 
deepest, darkest people in Africa who still do all kinds of witchcraft and things like that. And we're better than the cannibals in South America. And on and on it goes. But God says we are without excuse because we have seen His glory and we have rejected it. Darwin's origin as a species has corrupted the faith of so many people because they only had an intellectual assent to the Bible. And then they stopped believing the scriptures and followed. I'm not talking about people that are the ones that go out and commit all kinds of crimes and get drunk and and do that kind of thing. I'm talking about the nice people, the up and out who reject Christ, as well as the down and out who reject Christ. In fact, it's easier for the down and out to see his sin and come to Christ than it is for the up and out who doesn't think he has any sin. Because they see no need of being having to be saved. And they use Jesus as a problem solver. You come to Jesus and He'll help you with His problems. He might cause you more problems instead of helping you with them. But diligent study of Romans 1, 18-32 should show the saints that we should not be surprised at the state of the world. Because when we come in rebellion against God, and suppress His truth, God lets us go our own way. The futility of trying to make people better because they willfully rebel against God and they cannot look to Christ because they will not look to Christ. It's a moral problem. It's not a physical problem. They don't see themselves as Paul said they were. And our evangelism can only be good news if we show people the bad news of their need for Christ. And Paul says, His wrath is revealed and we are without excuse. We know the glory of God. It says it's clearly visible and yet we pretend not to see it or we get mad and violate it violently. Rulers military leaders, men, women, children, the whole world is guilty and the wrath of God abides on each and every one of us without Christ. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. At one time, we saints were like the rest of the world, but God rescued us from the dominion of Adam and put us in the kingdom of His dear Son. We see in John 3.18 that the person that rejects Christ, the wrath of God abides on him. And he says, it's repeated in John 3.36. We see in the Scriptures when the wrath of God has been revealed. Well, it was revealed in the Garden of Eden when Adam sinned and God kicked the first parents out of the garden. That was his wrath. We see Noah, who was saved by grace, he and his wife and his three children and their wives, and the rest of the world died in a flood. We see Egypt, where the children of Israel were, and God judged the Egyptians to free the Israelites. And they came into Canaan, and they judged the Canaanites. Then when the people of Israel became so wicked, God judged them. And then Judah, the southern kingdom of Israel, was also judged. Empire em after empire, nation after nation, has seen the judgment of God. And then in A.D. 70, when God's own chosen people rejected Him, He destroyed them in A.D. 70. But the most vivid picture of the wrath of God that God has demonstrated we see at the cross.
whom God, and that's Jesus Christ, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in His blood. What, what does that mean? Christ is a propitiation. It means that God poured His wrath out on His own unique Son for the sins of His people. Who are His people? The ones who trust in Him from the Old Covenant through the New Covenant. All the ones that believe in Christ. He paid for our sins. Every last one of them. And each one of those sins was a death sentence. And Christ paid the penalty for each one of those. It says, through faith in His blood to declare His righteousness for the remission of sins that are past. That's the Old Covenant sins. All the people in the Old Testament that were saved were saved by Christ. To declare, I say at this time, His righteousness that He might be just and the justifier of Him who believes in Jesus. In the New Covenant, we are saved by Christ. And in the future, Revelation 21, God is going to reveal His wrath. Revelation 21, verse 8, But the fearful and the unbelieving, the first two inhabitants of hell are going to be the fearful and and the unbelieving. Murderers, the abominable, fornicators, sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in a lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Flee the wrath to come. Come to Christ. He said, if you will come to me, I will in no wise cast you out. If you will confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised Him from the dead, you will receive the righteousness of Christ and have your sins paid for. And you can look back at the cross and know that you're saved and you can look forward to the second coming and know that your redemption draws nigh. The guiltiest, the vilest person that will come to Christ. God is no but He is not beyond the reach of anyone who will come to Him. As I said, the vilest, the guiltiest person that comes to Him, He will save. He will save him from the penalty of sin, the power of sin, and the presence of sin. You know, a lot of people want to go to heaven, but they don't want God to be there. That's a person that has religion. We preach Christ and Him crucified, not a religion. Look to Christ, all people, and embrace Him. Be persuaded of His gospel. Believe what He has told you, that He is the Savior of the world. Come to Him today, if not today, when? Go in peace and grace. Amen.